Hello gamers, I'm Felicia. And I'm Micaela, and here's our review of Royal Palace. Royal Palace is a good game if you like the whole nobles and palaces era. If you're into this theme, you'll probably like this game. The point of the game is to recruit nobles from the garden area of the palace. Each noble has a victory point value. To recruit nobles, you will need to pay them with gold and seals. The first thing that struck me is that the rule book needs major work. While playing your first game, you will realize that you're asking yourself a lot of questions and going back to the rule book often. That's true. It's a very confusing game to get into. But once you know the mechanics of it, the game flows pretty well. You start the game with 18 servants and maybe some gold, depending on when your turn is. So player 1 gets no gold, player 2 gets 1 gold, player 3 gets 2 gold, and player 4 gets 3. The board is nice and it only folds once. You also get 9 palace room cards that are placed in a 3x3 fashion, at random, every game. You will need to place all the nobles inside of the garden area in random locations. This makes the game a little different every time you play. Once that's done, each player places two servants on the parade grounds and three servants on the stairway. Then, each player also gets to place five extra servants anywhere they want inside the palace. Okay, so now the game is ready to begin. The player turns are divided into eight major steps, one for each room. The first two steps have to be in this order. The first step to see how many servants from the palace grounds you get to place on the gate, which is kind of the entrance to the palace. If you have two, then you place two servants on the gate. If you have a majority on the grounds, you get an additional servant. The second step is to check how many movements you can do by counting the servants on the stairway. If you have three there, you can move your servants around the palace three rooms without going diagonally. Again, if you have a majority there, you get an additional movement bonus. The next four steps are taken in any order you wish. You can get gold from a mint for every servant you have there. You can get blue seals for every servant in the king's room. You can get purple seals for every servant in the queen's room. The next step is to enlist nobles. You do this by discarding a servant from the office room and by using your gold. Blue seals and purple seals to buy nobles. Each noble has a cost to them and you have to choose wisely who you want to enlist. Some nobles give lots of victory points. Some give you cards, some give you gold every turn, and others give you more servants. The cost of the nobles also decreases as squares next to them become empty. And buying a noble on the outer ring of the garden will give you points at the end of the game. The last step is the back door. There you get cards for every servant on that square. If you like some of those cards, you can keep them by removing a servant for every card you want to keep. The rest is discarded. Now, some of the squares have a symbol on them that means you will get a bonus for having more servants in that room. The bonus is usually plus one to whatever you are supposed to get from that room. In the mint, for example, you would get an extra gold if you have more servants there. If there is a tie, then the cardinal room comes in and breaks those ties. For every servant a color has there, it adds to the tiebreaker and gives the winner the bonus. That's the end of the first player's turn. Looks complicated, doesn't it? But it really isn't after you play three or four games. The point of the game, as you might have figured it out, is to get as many victory points as possible. You can get these by getting nobles, paying for cards and placing servants on the outer ring of the garden. Now here is my big problem with this game. There is no sense of character playing, not even a storyline. I was playing the game asking myself, why am I even playing? Why am I enlisting these nobles? What is my purpose? Are we going to war or something? To give a better example of this, take a look at Dominion. At least it has a storyline behind it. Or even the game A Touch of Evil. There is a town that is being ravaged by a horror, and it's our job to stop it. But in this game, no story. Just serve the king and queen and enlist nobles. I agree. I was playing the game and asking myself the same thing. What's the point? This game needs a better rulebook and a background story. However, the artwork is really nice and having visited the palaces myself in France, they really captured the feel and theme of this game through its artwork. I like that the game is random every time, but there is not much interaction between the players. Everyone is doing what they need to do to win. I I'm sorry, but there are better games out there. I'm gonna have to give this game a 6.5. Maybe we were playing it wrong, but if the rulebook was better, the gameplay would have been better too. 
I agree on everything you said, but playing a 4 player game can get kind of fun trying to break ties and getting the bonus, but again, there are better games out there. This one is not even in the top 10 on the Rio Grande site. I'm gonna give it a 7.